This is Josh Mandel with a quick introduction to the way that smart on fire applications land inside of EHR systems, the way that clinicians might see them at the point of care. Uh, so a lot of my content has been focused on patient access. How can individuals connect apps to their own records? But today we're going to take a look at the clinician facing side of the equation. Uh, and just as a quick orientation, the Smart App Launcher is a tool that you can use to test out your own apps against a sandbox environment. And one of the things that we include in the launcher is what we call a very low fidelity simulation of what it looks like to embed an app inside of the EHR. So if you check this box and then you use this tool to launch your app or launch a sample app, what you'll see here is kind of this simulated frame where the top side of the screen here and the sidebar represent screen real estate that sort of belongs to the EHR, as well as the status bar along the bottom. And the middle part of this frame is screen real estate that belongs to your app. Um, this is a low fidelity simulation, but it tells you something about who the EHR user is. Oftentimes the EHR will include some context about the patient that sits outside of your app. Oftentimes the EHR will have its own menu structures and additional content being displayed around your app. And as the app developer, you get some real estate to embed inside of. Um, and we have some context so that when this app launches, the EHR can tell you, for example, whether there is external information being presented on the screen outside of your app that has things like uh, the identifying information for the current patient. So we have a, a property in our access token response called need patient banner. And the idea here is as an app, you don't need to display all of these identifiers for the patient if they're being displayed in the context of the EHR around you. So we pass in that kind of information so apps can adjust and do the right thing. Uh, so that's a little bit about how our simulation environment looks, but I wanna give you a sense of how these kinds of integrations go inside of real world EHR systems. And I'll show you examples from some of the documentation of real EHR vendors and a couple of the tools that they offer. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how you can learn more about or how you can discover these resources directly. So this website here is the CHAPL, the Certified um, Health, Health IT Product List maintained by the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT. And you can come here and you can browse through all of the certified EHRs. And you can say, I'm just interested in the EHRs that have been certified to meet the 2015 Cures update. That's the current version of the EHR regulations. And that includes, uh, for our purposes, uh, one important certification criteria, which is the G10 criteria, Standardized API for Patient and Population Services. So you can see there's about 50 products that have been certified um, against this criterion today. And we expect that number is going to be growing quite a bit between now and the end of the year where the deadline is approaching. Um, but just to give you a sense, you know, if we look at one of these products, maybe um, this EHR here from Athena Health, they have met this 2015 Cures update, uh, and we can get details from the product information list. We can drill into this G10 criterion and to understand a few things that EHR vendors need to report as part of the certification program. So if you drill in here for any one of these products, you'll get direct links to that vendor's API documentation. You'll get information about how to learn their fire base URLs. Um, and you can use that documentation to actually register apps and, and be able to connect and work with those systems. Now for patient facing apps, uh, the expectation is that's free of charge for patients, it's free of charge for app developers, uh, it's really a patient's choice. For clinician-facing apps, there might be more of a marketplace, and those features can differ vendor by vendor, but they all need to support the same standards, uh, and they all need to be publicly documented so that app developers can understand how these API offerings work. So if you're interested in integrating with a particular EHR, this Certified Health IT Product List is a good place to start. You can use it to figure out whether your EHR uh, that, that you want to integrate with has actually met these certification criteria, whether they offer Smart on Fire APIs, and how to find their documentation if they do. Um, so now I wanted to actually look through a few examples from EHR vendors about the kinds of things that they document so you can see more about how Smart on Fire apps can surface inside of the EHR. Um, so this is an example from Athena Health, um, where they have a view onto smart apps that can integrate inside of the EHR. I won't play through the whole video here, but I'll include um, a link to it in the description. But you can get a sense that inside of the EHR, 
there's a sidebar where apps can be listed. And that list of apps can be used to directly launch uh, Smart on Fire apps, which are labeled here as partner applications. So that's an example of one way that external apps, Smart on Fire apps, can be launched inside of an EHR. And then by clicking on one of those apps in the list here, the app gets a certain amount of screen real estate within which it can display its user interface. So think about what you're seeing here as being perfectly analogous to what I showed you here in our simulated EHR environment. This is the same kind of integration pattern uh, that you might get inside of um, a real world EHR system. Whereas an app developer, this is kind of the real estate that you get to control um, and, and interact with. Uh, another example here would be the documentation from Cerner, where uh, you might want to understand things like uh, if you're embedding a smart app inside of the Cerner EHR, what are the access points, which is to say, what are the different ways that a provider can launch a smart app from inside of the Cerner power chart EMR. Um, and so there's an example here where uh, you can set it up so that your app can be launched from what they call their table of contents. Um, and an entry can be added to that table so that users can launch your app directly from there. Uh, in Cerner, there's an extensibility mechanism called mpages, and you can access smart apps from inside of an mpage component. Um, so you can basically attach a, a way to launch these apps to a menu button or to a fixed piece of screen real estate so that the app can be launched by a clinician using those kinds of triggers. Um, this page has a lot more detail about the technical integration details, uh, but I just wanted to highlight this as patterns for launching an app. Um, similarly, from the, the Cerner perspective, uh, they have a gallery where it's possible to browse the apps that have been validated for integration inside of the clinician facing side of the EHR. Um, so this is kind of Cerner's view on the set of apps that they offer for kind of click to install. Uh, and then one other quick example from Epic on the open Epic site, there's information for smart app developers who want to build clinician facing apps, um, including details about a sandbox that they offer, but also a framework for testing web-based applications that you want to integrate into Epic. Uh, and so they have a set of testing tools that are documented here as part of this um, page about a system called HyperDrive um, that lets you integrate a smart on fire app. Um, and part of what they offer is a set of tools for testing this kind of integration uh, so that you can try out your app uh, inside kind of a simulated environment and make sure that your app works with the right versions of the browser controls. So that's something that they've described as their hyperdrive client test harness uh, that lets you try out um, those kinds of workflows, uh, including things like smart on fire app launches. So this is kind of a quick tour of what it looks like to integrate an app inside of the clinician facing EHR some of the testing tools that you can use to try out your apps in isolation, how you can learn what EHRs support this style of integration, uh, and that is to say all certified EHRs need to support this style, how you can find the developer documentation, and then a quick view of, of some of the details that you might see in that developer documentation. Uh, please do leave comments or send me a note on chat.fire.org if there's an area here where you'd like to take a deeper dive um, or if there's other topics you'd like to learn more about.